Hello and welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Teniola Shoboele. We begin in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where the Electoral Commission says initial results from the country's presidential election could be delayed beyond the January 6 deadline. The Commission's president, Cornel Nanga, says counting centers are still waiting for more than 80% of voting tallies to be submitted by local polling stations. He did not say what had caused the delays, but opposition candidates seized on his statement to repeat the allegations of fraud. Meanwhile, regional monitors from the African Union and Southern African Development Community have described last Sunday's election as reasonably well-managed and relatively peaceful. But the Roman Catholic Church Observer team reported more than 100 cases of election monitors being denied access to polling stations. Some 1.26 million out of nearly 40 million were excluded from Sunday's vote. Their voters in the cities of Beni, Butembo and Yombi who have had their vote delayed until March, well after the new president will be inaugurated in January. The Electoral Commission says the deadly Ebola outbreak and insecurity made voting in those areas impossible. Joining us now is an African affairs analyst, Alistair Wilcox. Thank you for joining us and of course a happy new year to you. Thank you, Teniola, and a happy new year to you and Thank my you. esteemed uh, viewers. Thank, Thank you for having me. Yeah, firstly, let's talk, let's get your thoughts on all that is happening in the DRC. As an African affairs analyst, what do you make of all of it? Uh, well, uh, it's gratifying that at least um, after a long delay that the elections have held, uh, not just holding, but that uh, President Kabila was not standing as a candidate even though he's supporting a particular candidate. So it's quite gratifying, and uh, it gives one relief to Africa and to the entire world that at least there is a march towards a transition in the DRO uh, Congo. Uh, and it's going to be the first time that there will be a successful transition of uh, power in a democratic setting in DRO Congo. We'll be having coups and uh, counter coups and all whatnot. So it's gratifying that at least an election has held and the incumbent is not standing even if he's going to sponsor a candidate. But uh, in, in all, I think Africa should be happy for it. Well, in line with what you've just said, the AU and the SADC describes the election as reasonably well-managed and relatively peaceful. Do you think this was so? Well, um, yes, we've not had incidents of uh, severe violence. Yes, I, I must admit that. We've not had incidents of severe violence uh, for the elections. We've not had killings, burning, arson, and all whatnot. But of course, certainly in every election held in Africa, there will always be this uh, 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 mutual suspicion, which by the opposition, of having been rigged out of the election. Yes, so far it's been well managed. Um, from the feelers about the results, it's not a, a walkover for the government candidate. There is potential that uh, there may be an upset. Uh, as for the as for those the observers that may have. Uh, witness the election and so there are bills up to the election you remember that uh, it was reported that uh, the government denied accreditation to observers from uh, eu and from uh, the western world only eu observers and um uh, SADC observers were allowed in so that's some of cred uh, credibility uh, that brings some credibility question to, 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 the, to, the, to the entire process but i think without a uh, fear of a uh, 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 being uh, um, uh, being in, in, in error of judgment, relatively, yes, we can say the election should pass the threshold of credibility. Okay, so now the election has been held, but the commission is saying that the results may be delayed. What impact is this likely to have on the DRC, bearing in mind that they have waited so long for these elections? Well, um, we know the reasons why some areas, yes, of course, certainly in Africa, we know the problem of uh, election management in Africa. Uh, the, 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 the basic, the absence of basic infrastructure that will transmit results as fast as it should. So it's, it's, it's not unexpected that results will delay. And then tallying will have to go on. But most often than not, when the results are delayed, they are doing some cooking, they are doing some manipulations. And so that is also going to raise some tension uh, within the system. Uh, the exit pools does not give the government a commanding lead, the government can a commanding lead. In fact, some polls is putting the government candidate at the third position. Uh, but when elections results are delayed in Africa, uh, generally, you discover that at the end of the day, the outcome will not 
represent the entire wish of the people. So that is a fear. And so anybody raising uh, uh, accessibility issue, anybody raising objections in this regard, has some, I mean, has some uh, grounds to raise such objection. But by, by and large, with the vigilance of the opposition, with the vigilance of even the SADC group and the EU, I think there should be pressure on the government, on the, the Electoral Commission, to publish the result on time and to declare the real result so that Africa can move forward. Well, one of the issues uh, over the pre-election unrest was that one million voters were denied their civic right of voting because of what the commission says, Ebola outbreak. But with the inauguration slated for January, what is the Electoral Commission trying to achieve with this? And I mean, come March, will these people's votes even make a difference? Well, uh, <laughs> you cannot put the cart before the horse. You cannot do... Uh, 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 swearing, you cannot integrate a new government, and then one million votes are still outstanding. I think for me, that is, that is arrant nonsense. Uh, yes, the reason for the, I mean, for uh, uh, restricting the elections from those areas, Ebola and uh, another outbreak, yes, is it credible enough? For me, I don't think it is, really and truly, because one million voters is a lot of, uh, I mean, can swing Victory to any side. And when you get the background that it was reported that in this area you have the, the opposition stronghold. So, whatever manipulation that wants to be done, I think that should be pressure. Because you cannot uh, inaugurate a government in January and then hold a suspended election in March for which the outcome may just be academic exercise. So, I don't know where they're getting that structure from, but I think it's a very, very wrong structure and it is uh, a ploy. I think it's a ploy by the government to deny the opposition victory. Because if that area is a stronghold of the opposition, you're talking about one million. One million is quite a substantial to, 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 I mean, to tweet victory into any side. Except that, except of any candidate who have more than one million votes in excess to the second, to the second candidate, then uh, it's okay, it may not be, it may not be uh, a material. But anything less than that is material and cannot stand the test of credibility. So that, for me, is a, is, is a big minus for the election process. And, and it's typical of Africa. There will always be something that African countries would do in order to thwart the needs of the of the, of the people. But I don't think in this sense it should stand. And the African Union and whatever uh, international people should put pressure. Let the election be, be stayed off until these one million voters have had the vote of credit vote. Then a true winner will emerge that will be accepted to everybody. African Affairs Analyst, Alistair Wilcox, it was a pleasure getting your thoughts on that. Thank you for joining us on Network Africa. Thank you very much. It's always my pleasure. Once again, Happy New Year. Thank you. Same to you.